Hello, Rishi. Thank you for joining us. Um, I am here together with uh, Rashid, coach, speaker, and an author. Um, and, uh, you know, on my part, I'm a coach in training, and uh, I am proud to consider Rashid my mentor on this journey. Um, Rashid, we are here to talk about a journey, mm -hmm. a fascinating journey into self-discovery, into mm -hmm. finding oneself. Mm -hmm. Please, please, uh, you know, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. Um, we find ourselves in all sorts of journeys in life all the time, isn't it? Journey from being a child into adult, journey to achieve this, career journey, life journey, business journey, all sorts of journeys all the time. Rail journeys, plane journeys, we're on journeys all the time. Mm -hmm. um, some people are on a journey of personal development. They're wanting to you know, in some way become more comfortable, confident, or, you know, more rounded and so on. Some people on a professional or business development journey, they're wanting to move ahead in their career and so on. And then I'd say that some people on what I would call a self-development journey, some people see self-development as a person development, let's say the self journey of finding self. Who am I? Why am I? Why am I here? What is all this stuff about? And for me, that's what this is all about. Sometimes mad people are on there through desperation because life's come knocking at the door. Divorce, separation, redundancy, all sorts of things. Major world challenge at like the times that we're in right now where lots of people are having to ask themselves deep questions. Who are we? Why are we, why are we here? What's going on? And so lots of people are asking themselves these deep questions, but it can happen at any time. There's been a loss, there's been, uh, there's been, a, there's been separation, so there's been this, there's been that going on, where we find ourselves through desperation. Nothing seems to be working. I've done everything. You get the people, very, very, very successful people. They've done everything. And yes, they've had the number one hit records. Yes, they've been prime minister, president. Yes, they've been CEO, chief executive. Yes, they've got the right house, the right body type, the right this, the, that. But it seems empty, worthless. It's not given them those things. Or the person who's thirsty, it's the person who's desperate. Um, the person, the person with this, the desire. There's this, this desire to, to really unearth these things, to get your like this, to really understand, to unearth what's the nature of, of life? Who are we? Why am I here? This thing. So it could be either, but it may well happen in life. So it's really for this person. And it can be a challenging journey because there isn't that much. Most things are really helping us to achieve something. And this has got, this is no thing. <laughs> this is no thing so we're going to be taking people that on a journey of four of a four-part journey one the nature of life today we're going to be looking at what is the nature of life what is this thing this mysterious thing what is it we're going to be looking at it. i'm not saying that i'm next but i'm inviting everybody to look what is the nature of life two what's the nature of my mind because so much of this stuff as it plays out in the mind we only become obsessed by this i'm not this i'm not this i should be this as an, as an adult or from that the mind that emerges in us from when we're about four, five, six, where we suddenly, you know, when we're, when we're very, very young, we don't have these issues or concerns. We don't get lost in the mind. We're playing, we're discovering. One minute we're crying, one minute we're laughing. We're not, we don't get caught up in not that self nonsense or that stuff. But for the rest, rest of the time, for a later childhood, teens, through adult life, we're constantly in this goals, dreams, ambitions, need to achieve this, all of this kind of, and I describe it, Vlad, is that, you know, um, we, in broad terms, success is something we spend our whole life looking for. Fulfillment is something we spend our whole life overlooking. So what's the nature of life, first of all? What's the nature of life? How does this move? What's the nature of the mind, which I've begun to talk about, you know, this stuff about the mind? What is thoughts? Why is it I constantly seem to be worried about this or comparing myself to that person or overwhelmed by this or stress and so on? What is all this stuff about mind? Um, and we live in an age where lots of people that seem to be wrestling with more and more mental health challenges or identity challenges. It's deep, this stuff in mind. What is it that in this human condition means that we find ourselves fighting with ourselves or fighting with others? in our friends or families or different people of different color, creed, class, religion, faith, this, that, that, ideas, backgrounds. What's all that nonsense about that the human species has been caught up with generation after generation or this happened to this generation and they still hate their father, their mother, their auntie or this or that because of all this stuff, mind, all this mind-made nonsense. What is all of this stuff? 
And how is it therefore we're able to use the mind mindfully? So in that stuff, we'll discover that the mind is sometimes, it's more of a prison than our reality. The mind can be more of a prison because it's that that, that imprisons us and that we want to imprison everybody else. And that, so how is that we can, you know, remind, remember, recognize, recognize. That's what we're doing here. We are recognizing, we are recognizing the mind. We will be recognizing it by seeing it, by seeing the nature of the mind, looking at it. How does it move? How can I be at peace with it? How can I rather peace? This is what people say they want. They want peace of mind. Peace of mind will not be found in any of the trophies. Won't be. Then the nature of the heart. Part three is the nature of the heart. Because we, we're so caught up in the mind, we're only using half of our, of our magic. The, mind, the heart, the journey of the heart. Today we're recording this on Mandela Day. Mandela is an example of somebody who discovered heart. How's that we're able to lead in a different way, connect with people from the heart? To achieve the impossible, where everyone had been separated through mind, through this ideology, that ideology, this belief system, that belief system, this color, that thing. How is it that something like able to unify people of such different backgrounds and that every world leader would want to be seen with this particular leader because it was something that they had discovered in the prison, but not in the prison of the mind. What is it that they discovered? This journey of the heart, of becoming who we are. So you know, later you'll hear what your heart's always been telling you. Stop trying to be who you think you should be and become who you are. This journey of the heart. What is that? This journey of compassion. Is there another way we'll discover? Is there a way in which I can meet myself from heart? Fall in love with myself? Appreciate myself? Reconnect to the people in my life? And it's not a big order. People are finding this right now during this period of time. We're recording this during a time when the world's here, afflicted by COVID-19. But in this time of this pandemic of health challenge economic meltdown and all of this there's also been there's been an explosion of love the kindness the connectivity how is it i can connect to that, that 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 i don't need to wait for some major tragedy or bereavement or whatever i can connect and meet everybody from the heart it's very very possible the power of the heart because we're in an era where we think the mind is sovereign mind isn't sovereign how can we bring the heart back in and revere the mind, achieve peace of mind, utilize the mind, but use it for enrichment. So, because otherwise we as a species won't, we, we, as a species, Vlad, we have not elevated from the ancient time, from the ancient Greece and the philosophers, we've not, that we, 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 the, the, the consciousness and the level of compassion has not evolved one bit. Technology has, all sorts of things, of medicine, this, so that our knowledge of science, but where our compassion as a species and our consciousness has not evolved one jot. In some individuals it has, but here's the invitation for you, whoever you are, and you don't need to read a book or any of my thing or anything, it's available to you right now. Throw all the books away. Throw it all away. The heart will tell you everything you need to know. This is the invitation of this series. Finally. Finding and following your own unique path. This is the invitation. It would seem like a tall order. For the mind, it's almost impossible. From the heart, it's easy. From the mind, it's almost impossible. How are we going to achieve this? How on earth is it possible to achieve it? But you'll meet those people. They'll show up and the kindness of their heart, your heart melts with their warmth, their compassion. They're usually people who have nothing but they've got all the wisdom of life because they watch life. They know the movement, the flow of life. That's the invitation because we're, we're here. What's the nature of life? What's the nature of the mind? What's the nature of the heart? What's the, what, how is that I'm able to follow my own path? It's for you if you're desperate, desperation, nothing's worked, or if you're thirsty, the desire. That's the journey. Thank you for that, Rashid. That sounds like one hell of a journey, if not the journey. Um, I, I, I dare say that uh, it's something that uh, we should all perhaps pursue on some level. Perhaps, perhaps that is what society was meant to be and we forgot. And perhaps that's why we're, we're, we're 
discussing so intently, let's say, today about so many topics that raise, uh, you know, almost conflict. Mm. Because maybe we've built a society that doesn't serve that very purpose, which, which, which is to, fo- to, to find your, your heart, your path, and to be able to follow it. Society should support that. I'm, this is just my assumption uh, based on what I'm hearing. And it's wonderful, Vlad, you know, let's play with, look at where you are, look at the background. That we, we, we know that there's this call to reconnect with nature, but sometimes in the construct of the world that we built up, we are disconnected to ourselves, we're disconnected to nature. So I love the fact that that's the background, this lovely metaphor of how can I reconnect to my, how can I discover my own nature? How can I rediscover nature? And how can I discover the nature of my own journey? That's what we're asking ourselves here. So I guess we're ready to, with your permission, um, head into part one, the nature of life. (laughs) I would love to hear what, what, what you have to say. Yeah. And so I would say as we step into this, the nature of life, if you're listening to this, I'm nudging, I'm urging you to follow your own heart, your own knowledge of the nature of life. What is the nature of life? Um, so, Vlad, you know, um, it strikes me that there's a few things here. First thing to say is that there's the myth, the thing that I call the myth of modern living, that I remember very, 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 very early on um, that emerged in my own coaching journey. Um, I call it the myth of m- m- modern living, that, that success would lead to fulfillment, that once I achieve this, 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 right, body type, the right this, the right exam results, the right house, the right partner, the right this, the right that, the right amount of money in the bank and so on, I will be fulfilled. So once I achieve this, success leads to fulfillment. Doesn't. Doesn't, does it? Might for a while, but it doesn't. Um, So as I, I think I'd said that we, that in broad terms, success is something that we spend our whole lives looking for and fulfillment is something that we often overlook. But let's, even before we even go there, let's look at the nature of life. The nature of life is that we come and we go. The nature of life is that we find ourselves here in this mysterious experience. We didn't consciously, through the mind, and we'll come back to the mind in the next one, from the level of mind which we engage with at least, we didn't choose to be here. We didn't choose our parents. We didn't choose the nature of our birth. We didn't choose the skin color, the body type, the gender. We didn't choose any of that. We didn't choose the location. We didn't choose the amount of wealth, power or prestige, (laughs) beauty that are the, the families that we arrive in. We didn't select anything. We didn't select the language that we speak in. We didn't select the words. We taught the definition, we're given our name. We find ourselves in this world. We find ourselves in this body. which we either accept or we reject. We don't choose our level of ability or disability. We don't choose how it is that society responds to us. We don't choose the weather. All the weather of life will come and go. All the seasons of life will come and go. I love the metaphor of the weather and the seasons of life. All the seasons of life will come. Joy, happiness, excitement, exhilaration, disappointment, loss will come and we go. There will be bereavements. There will be ill health. The body will fall away. What are we going to do about it? Sometimes in life, there's no problem. Sometimes in life, there's no solution. Between these two apparent poles, life flows. What are we going to do about that? There's no resolve to this human, that dilemma. That's the beauty of life, the invitation of life to understand. That's the dance of life and it can be painful 
and often it would seem that we're wanting to run away from that paid pain don't we want to run away from the fact that um, our time here will be finite that the people that we love will all pass that our relationships may last for an hour for a month for a season for a year maybe for most of our lives but like on most journeys most people are going to get off at different stops go in different directions that's the nature of life Most of us, if we were honest, don't know about the, the nature of how we came to be here. We might be told it, we might be taught it, it might resonate with us. We also might change our ideas about it many times. Often bear in mind also, it's interesting, the first lot of ideas you have about how we came to be, we didn't pick, you're told. So that's something else too. I want to introduce something here, which we'll come back to Vlad later, which is language we need to be very mindful about because one word I'll say we'll have one, we will have one thought about that, but we find ourselves here, there's this dilemma. The Buddhists would put it that, 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 that almost like that, that suffering, that life is through that lens of that thing, it, it can be seen as suffering. But it's just what it is. It's only suffering if I, if I, if my mental relationship to it, it's only deep suffering, ongoing suffering, if my relationship to it, to it is where I'm trying to negate that, block that up, not realize that. And, and we do, we tend to, we t tend to um, forget or try and overlook or push those things away. So there's something about if we can embrace the uncertainty, if we can embrace the fact that yes, we do, we come and we go. If I can embrace the fact that I don't know, I didn't choose, I found myself here. So, and I wonder if there's any questions you might want to ask. Uh, whilst you do, I want the listeners to just sit with that. Sit with that. Is it true? Does it chime true? If it chimes true with you, then embrace it. If it doesn't, throw it out, stop watching. I'm just presenting things that we can all look at and observe. We come and we go. People are born, that they die. There's good health, there's ill health. We find ourselves fighting and coming together. We want to belong, we want to be by ourselves. We arrive kicking and screaming. So there's, that, there's this duality between we want to be independent, we arrive kicking and screaming, want to be independent. The next minute we want to be held. That's the nature of life. If you want to be independent, we want to belong. When we get into chapter two, the nature of mind will realize something about how it is we find ourselves constantly fighting. But in that nature of life, we find ourselves, conditioning will soon kick in, which we'll come back to in the stuff about the mind. But that's the nature of life, isn't it, Vlad? And if we were to just pause and breathe, we would see it. And many people right now, when we're recording this, this is what they've realized. We're recording this during COVID. Lots of people realize, hey, this thing of life is precious. We find ourselves here. We've all got different backgrounds and so on. But here's something that um, is inviting us all to stop and ask ourselves these questions and to realize the beauty and the fragility of life. But guess what? Lots of people are born dying and sick every day all out through all sorts of different things but it just happens that this thing which is newer to our minds invites us to look at how it is that we're showing up in life how is it that we're treating each other how is it that we're treating the ecology how is it that we what is it that we revere economically how is it that we've constructed our societies but in terms of life itself sometimes all the tools all the techniques all the technology will fail you then at last you need to use your heart so we cleverly build up societies and all of this stuff and all the magical things of this and that and the beautiful buildings and all of this and da, 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 beautiful careers and all of this stuff but it's going to be it won't save us from this human condition it may incubate us from it, it might make it might more more comfortable for a while on some levels until life comes knocking at the door and there's a bereavement, there's a separation, there's a divorce, there's this, the person rejects us and so on. But within that, the nature of life, there's desire. 
this fear and the desire, the desires to be this or to be that. Then, so there's the physiological, there's the, and I'm no scientist, but there's the desires, there's the bodily, you know, as we grow up and the desires, sex, mating, blah, 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 the, the body, food, da, 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 all of that stuff, sleep and rest, which we've got nothing to do with again. You know, people say the hormones start raging. Like, we've got nothing to do with all of that. We, we're hungry. What have we got to do with that? We're tired. Sleep falls upon us. How are we going? There's no resolve to that. That's the beauty of this human condition. But through the mind, which we'll discover later, the mind thinks it knows, it knows nothing of that. So we should also realize that that's part of it, the beautiful dance of desire. And then in life, there's fears, many, many born from trying to control this thing which is uncertain so any thoughts you wanting to share on that Vlad before we leave uh, the nature of life but we find ourselves wrestling with it all the time or trying to block it out there's no resolve to that as I as far as I mean I'd invite everyone to look at it if you can solve it great good luck Yeah, I've got a number of, of thoughts coming up. Um, you know, you, you, you mentioned that there is no resolve to the, to, to the mystery of life and to some of the elements which, we, which, which, which come to characterize us, to, 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 to make us in a way, um, and yet we haven't chosen them. That's but right, yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad on that note. In that note, in that space, there's no resolve because on that very pure fundamental level, there's not a problem. That before we put in all the mind-made stuff, where there are all sorts of challenges, the fact that we're born and we thought the body will fall away, the, ba- the fact that we wake up and we go to sleep, the fact that the seasons change and so on, that's the nature of the flow of life. It's not the word... A problem is a situation that I ever want it to be this or that. There will then be a whole level of how we treat each other, how we show up, how kind or cruel we are to each other. Sure, that can be very problematic and so on, but the the pure nature of the flow of life is just that is the flow of life that we might, over a period of time, let's say that we like, but that's but that's just the nature of life. So it's interesting for us to just be for us to be gently mindful about that. Um, and before you see, before we're taught about right, wrong, good, bad, and so on, as a baby, we're just dancing in this thing of life before things have been problematized, before we've been problematized, before we've been told this or that, before life has turned into a series of problems. Is life is a mystery to be lived more than it is a problem to be fixed on this, on this level. When we get into mind, we might discover all sorts of things, all, that's a whole different thing, but the nature of life, Here it is. We may or may not like it for our conditioned mind, but this is it. If one's, if you're watching this because you're wanting some degree of peace or happiness or, or some degree of contentment, it would strike me that it's this recognizing of that that's the dance of life. That's going to be our best hope because then we are not dividing ourselves with life. Do you see? Because we are of it. It's, it. It would seem that we are of it. It is of us. We, you know, we, eat, we eat the stuff from the land, and so we're connected. We're connected. We, we breathe. See, sometimes we get into this thing of the mind that we're disconnected from this whole thing. We're not. We find ourselves here. We're breathing everything in. We breathe it in. We let it out. We're part of this whole thing. We fall away. The body falls away into it. And we think that somehow we're separate from it. If I separate myself from it, it's far more of a challenge, it would seem. So if I realize, oh, there's this dance of life. Ah, and to look at it, what is this? And to be curious, it would seem, it would seem my invitation. If if it's not resonating with you, if you're finding it difficult, then I'd invite you to perhaps look afresh instead of seeing yourself as apart from it, just seeing it, watching the dance of it, watching the dance of it, is is an invitation. If what you're doing is working for you, great. 
But if there seems to be a degree in which there's a battle going on, two choices in life, you can fight it. This is an important thing to say before we close this section. There's two choices in life. You can have to fight it or if you can embrace it. If you fight it, you will lose. What do I mean by that? Because life is life. Eventually life will take me, you know, it will, won't it? You know, it might be by natural course, it might be something, I'm going to lose that fight because life, the elements, the, the elements, <laughs> the seasons, winter or whatever, or extreme summer, they will, you know, do you know what I mean? Life will, so I can either fight it, but sometimes the fight seems to be part of our journey. I said that we arrived kicking and screaming. So that's part of our DNA in a way to want to explore ourselves. On one level, the basic level, that's natural. But if I continue to fight it, I'm fighting myself. And we see it in life, isn't it? I'm fighting myself. I should be this. I should be that. They're not this. They're not that. I'm fighting the very thing. There's one planet. You know, we look at the ecological thing. What am I going to do? I'm part of it. How can I extract myself from it? I, it? It doesn't take a sign. You don't need to be a scientist. You do not need to be a religious master. You don't need to be a priest. You don't need to be any of these things. See, it. I'm just inviting people to just step back and to look afresh with your own eyes, not the eyes that you've been conditioned with, with your own eyes, with your own heart. And to come up with no answers. <laughs> well like you mentioned it's not a problem if one looks at it that way with that curiosity and that uh, clear clear mind and and clear heart one realizes that there is no problem there is nothing to fix um, and in that moment Vlad the beautiful thing that happens is that there's a kind of humility that happens where there's a soft fear of recognizing one's own mortality i don't know i am still concerned that sometimes the the weather or there might be uncertainty right this may not happen or what happens if i lose my you know for these real practical thingies but but at the same time there's something about that gentleness like people are discovering right now of something of a tenderness to life knowing that it is fleeting I find myself here, the body will decay, and there might be doubts, there might be fears, there might be ups, downs. And then we realize it's something of beauty that can be really appreciated whilst we're here. And then that invites us to look at the nature of mind and why so many occur problems do occur. And instead of us appreciating this, that while we're battling and fighting all the time, and is there another way? That's what we're going to explore um, in the mind. And then we look at the heart, what role does the heart play? And then how does one find one's own path? But, but I invite people, if they've watched this, to step out into life and look at it. Look at, watch the nature of life. Watch the seasons. Because again, that's everything thing that happens, lads. We lose track. We don't, the way that wind is, you know, moving. Go out there and look at life. You're, you're going to see things completely fresh. Go out and look at life. Just what, instead of judging it, look at it. And what this will again, will pick up on again with the mind but just to, to notice the flow of life and to just watch it um, and to be appreciative. There's an invitation here to be appreciative, to have a gratitude, that will help. But I'm sure we'll pick up on these things when we talk about the nature of mind, where things will become complicated, no doubt. But they don't have to be, I feel, uh, if we keep in mind where we started which was, there's a reason why I think you chose this as the first step into this journey towards finding the self, right? The nature of life, because it is primary. And that is what we should kind of never forget. We should, we should, we should build a structure around that core. And that structure needs to remind us that that core is there and what it is and what it is about, right? Because as difficult as it might be to live with gratitude and with curiosity, uh, you know, and, and to remember constantly how valuable and how mysterious life, life is, it is the one and only way, I, I dare say, that I can think of in which we will always keep perspective and therefore not fall into 
the trappings of the mind, which you will, yeah. I think you will, that's right. that's you've right. already touched upon. That's right. Life is constantly teaching us lessons. And the thing is that if we don't listen, it will teach us lessons because winter will come or bereavement or whatever will come. So it doesn't even matter whether I build a construct around it or not. It's, it's inconsequential. But if we do, if we do, we manage then to, we manage to, to, to put the mind in a position, in the position it was meant to be, because I feel the mind should have a relationship to this nature of life, which, which is enabling. It, it, the, so the mind is like the guardian of the nature of life. I, I mean, uh, I'm, just, I'm just trying to... And as we look at the mind, you see, this is why we've done it in this order, as you said. What's happening at this point, the mind will begin to creep in and the mind wants to own the show. Yes, yeah. The mind wants to own the show and tell us that if this, if that, if that, that, what we're saying in chapter one is that the mind's got nothing to do with this. The, the mind is secondary. The, maybe, maybe I can incubate, maybe, let's see. Let's see what happens once we begin to explore the mind. <laughs> let's see what happens when we explore. What we've done here today is just to look gently at the nature of life, that we come and we go, that the seasons come and they go. Sometimes there's a long winter, sometimes there's a short summer. That's the nature of life. Um, and that's the dance of life. At that moment, what we notice is the mind tends to be slightly quieter because it's not had a way in yet. And next time we look at the way that the mind creeps in and how the mind makes the proposition that you present, more challenging it might be. I agree that there's a way in which we can do a number of things that may well help us to appreciate life, but there's no guarantee. I can't control, you know, this is the thing, control. The, the, the thing was, what's beautiful that begins to come in here is this notion of control. Um, the, the mind is wanting to control. I was saying that before um, we can speak of um, choice, we have to understand conditioning. So what we've been just talking about so far is the nature of life. We find ourselves here. We find ourselves here. We're taught this, we're taught that, we gather this, this, there seems to be some innate kind of intelligence within this system, and then we gather knowledge and so on. And we try our best to try and work this out and work that out, which we'll, again, we'll come back to in terms of the nature of the mind. But the mind, what's useful here, the mind would want to creep in and it will throughout this process want to creep in and own and take this and shape that and so on and do all of this and do all of that and trying it to might and it spends its whole life doing that and it gets exhausted, which we'll discover. So it's been good that we've begun to creep into mind. But as far as life, life is a finally, this is a quote to, to leave everyone with. Life is a series of events, sensations which we label as this and that. It's a series of events, sensations, and that's what it is. The mind then we label it as good, bad, indifferent, and so on. But it's really, isn't it? It's the series of stuff, um, what you call it? manifest, it's the series of stuff. <laughs> Take a baby's brain and an adult's brain in terms of like, oh, this, this, this. but as an adult, it's, oh, it's this, it's this, and this, and we, you know, <laughs> so, so we'll discover that, you know, so we, we tend to, it's good, Vlad, because we tend to look at life through this adult mind of what it should be, what it could be, it could be more comfortable, it could be more this, it could be more that, it's what it is, and I've got no idea what it is, and one person labels it as this, one person labels it as that, but it, it's this dance, it's this experience, it's this mystery, which some people say it's this, some people say the cause is this, some people say the cause is that, it's for millennia. And we find ourselves battling through the mind over that. Let's just see it and, and recognize it's this dance that we label as different ways. Then let's look at the mind and see if we can arrive at a place of what we're gonna be doing there, Vlad, is saying, can we arrive at a place of peace of mind, understanding mind, understanding how the mind moves, how the mind moves us from away from being at peace with this phenomena into all this battling. And that there's a, is there another way? And then we'll explore the heart then we'll explore one's own path. But it's been so wonderful. Um, I'm in, so excited about this journey. 
Yeah, me too. Thank you, Rashid, for taking the time. This, this is indeed a, a good point to, to end this session, but uh, I think this was a very interesting and intriguing discussion. And, you know, I think uh, we can safely say we're very curious about what the people watching us uh, and, and listening about these uh, topics have to say and how they perceive it. Mm. So it would be interesting to hear about it in comments or even get in touch with us. Um, until then, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, until next time. Bye-bye.